Come on in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Jay, welcome back, my sister. Welcome, 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 welcome. Come on in, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. I want y'all to come on in. Yes. you god bless you my friend hallelujah those that stop by just to like us thank you so much god bless you i think i see sister calista love you my sister hallelujah those that pop in we just thank god for each and every one of you come on in Come on, please like it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. I miss my folks when they out of place. I miss y'all. <laughs> we thank God for you all that's coming in. Welcome in to the our Facebook uh, Tuesday night Bible study. This is our teaching Christian Center. I am co-pastor Patricia Fletch, Patricia Edwards, my husband, um, Pastor Harold W. Edwards. He's our pastor. Praise God. He's a man of God after God's own heart, and we thank God for him, and we look forward to seeing him um, just a little bit later on. I'm asking as you come on, if you all would just please like and share. How you doing, Sister Terica? Thank you for liking and sharing. As we go before the throne of grace, we just thank you right now, God. Hallelujah, as we say yes to your will and yes to your way. We thank you right now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Lord, we thank you that it will be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Lord, we thank you that tonight on this Bible study, God, I sit down and you stand up. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you know what your people need, that you speak a word in season, in the name of Jesus, that the words I speak, oh God, that are their life, like apples of gold and pitchers of silver. And we just thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for everyone that will be coming on. Thank you for the Artesian family. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name, God, and we give you praise. We ask that you have your way today. We ask that you have your way today in the name of Jesus. God, we love you. We praise you. There is none like you in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank God. Amen. Sister Green, God bless you. Sister Stephanie, we appreciate you. God bless you. Amen. And all those that are coming on, hallelujah. Thank God for you all one name by name and one by one appreciate you all so very 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 much as we will begin this wonderful study you all just come on in draw in draw close let call somebody let them know that we are we are here we are here to start um we were out of town on last week and had to do an encore presentation but we thank god that those of you uh that were so, you know, that missed us while we were gone, and we appreciate that so very much. We thank God for traveling mercies and traveling grace. It's always a good thing when you can go and come. Amen. That the Lord bless us to go and come back 
safely, and we appreciate that. I don't take it for granted. I'm telling you, hallelujah, I don't take it for granted. I'm just very appreciative, especially flying. I'm not the biggest, you know, the one that likes to fly so much, but I thank God that he take us over the highways, the byways, the skyways, and allowed us to come back. And we just thank God for that. And we thank God for those of uh, members of Artesian uh, family that I know that you all have been traveling. This is travel season. The kids, I know some of the kids went camping, some of the kids with the Disney World, the families there. And we thank God for those that had to go and come. And we thank God for your safe travels and thank God for you being back in the midst. We keep in our um, students now is the time that um, we know that uh, it's coming upon us that the students are returning back to school, uh, especially in this region. Um, they're starting some, some in some parts. They started back today. I know some teachers went back today and then um, they're going, I know the ones, some of the ones in Tallahassee and, and so forth, they're going back on the sick, I think they start next week and then we got some start the week after that. So, and leading all the way up, um, up until September, they'll be uh, jumping on at some point, some week. So we're keeping our, our, our youth and our, uh, our, our, uh, teachers, our, uh, all those that are in the school system, we're keeping them in prayer. We're keeping those that are having to work um, in the public, um, those that are in the sectors where you're having to, God bless you, Sister Clark, we thank God for you. Thank you for carrying on the prayer for us on last week. We appreciate you, dear. Um, we just appreciate you, one and all. But like I said before, we are keeping um, our prayers up. You know, um, seemingly we, you know, they are um, the numbers of for within, you know, those of you who are keeping um, your your ear attuned and and you're listening. You and I'm, I'm sure you're hearing um, that the numbers are going up in varying um, pockets all around. Um, we've been hearing that, so we're keeping uh, we're being very um, what we call. Our eyes are on the Lord right now, and we're trusting him, and we're thanking God. You know, our eyes are on you, Lord. Um, true safety is in God, true safety. And we want to thank God that we do the things that we're supposed to do. Amen. We do the things that we are supposed to do, such as uh, we do the things that we're supposed to do, such as wear our masks, we socially distance, and we just do those things. We um, uh, just uh, we do we do those things that we as we're supposed to do. However, true safety is in the Lord. Amen. So even in all of that, because we hear about people who are having repeat cases and different things of that nature. So we are yet praying and thanking God for the wisdom on how to govern ourselves. And we're praying for the leaders. We're praying for leaders and uh, lawmakers and the ones who have to make policy that govern the people. We're praying for them that they do what is right, not things that are what they call for politics sake, but do what is right, right for the people, the right thing, whatever that should be. How I, how I just, you know, everything is the, the, the political construct of this time has gotten so, you know, but I just pray because the prayers of the righteous saints of God that availeth much. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. Oh, don't forget to pray. Don't forget to tell God all about it because you remember our, the, uh, our pandemic, we had a posture at the very beginning of this thing, well over a year and a half ago, you all know that God gave us a word and, he, and we put it out there about a pandemic posture and the, what we are to do, you know, about prayer. Not to forget to pray. Not to forget to praise. And not to forget to stay in peace. Come on, somebody. Prayer, praise, and peace. You know, that was our posture. 
And we haven't let up from that posture. We have a 6.30 prayer that goes on on Tuesday. It's our intercessory prayer. We continue to pray. We've been praying consistently through as a group on that particular day. And then, you know, individually so we've been praying. So we keep that posture of prayer. Uh, ideally, we keep that posture of praise. Keep giving God the praise. God is yet worthy to be praised, yet worthy to be glorified, yet worthy to be magnified. And then we keep the posture of peace. Oh, he said he'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on, on him to let not our heart to be troubled. Hallelujah. Because he has given us a peace that surpasses all understanding. No, let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid, but to trust in God. And we thank God for each and every one of you that is joining on today. We see that there are seven or eight that have come on and those that are peeping in. We ask that you please like and share. Please help us spread the gospel. Help us spread this good news. This platform is here. Um, and we thank God that the word of God goes forth and it doesn't return void. That the right word for the right time. A word in season, a word fitly spoken. Hallelujah. I sit down. I don't take it for granted what God has done and who God is and how he continues to keep us. Ah, oh, my God, my God, my God. God be glorified and be magnified. Hallelujah. So come on in, everybody. Come on, draw close. Get your Bibles. Get your Bibles as we were going to study today. And uh, I don't know, for the last few weeks, it just seemed like I haven't had a particularly focused, focused, focused word, as it were. It seemed like the um, I'm, I'm waiting, I've been waiting on what the Lord is wanting to say in the moment. And some seeming like I'm at that place where he said, in that moment, he'll give us what to say. But I like a lot of times to have it, uh, some things already pulled down and because pastor was asking, well, what's the scripture for tonight? He was particularly asking me that. And I said, pastor, I haven't, I haven't had the download yet. I haven't, you know, I didn't have it. But late, uh, uh, within the day, God in, impressed upon my heart of what to speak about. And, you know, we've been on this whole series that the, the benefit of study and knowing the truth and that we're coming into God's word from a very organic way, um, looking at his word, trying to be without a doctrinal stance, but looking at the word of God. What is the word of God saying? What is God saying to us? And just opening up and allowing God to talk to us. And so today we have a particular study that um, we'll find out just why the Lord wants us in this particular study. So get your Bibles out and let us turn to Luke the 10th chapter. How about it? Luke, the 10th chapter. And, and we're going to start in, uh, at the 38th verse. Luke, the 10th chapter and the 38th verse. Those of you who don't mind putting that in the chat, I thank you so much, whoever can do that for me. Please like and share. Um, uh, put that in the chat, Luke, the 10th chapter and the 38th verse. And it reads as the, somebody get that in? I didn't see it come in, but somebody type that in. Somebody can, let me see, can I type fast and get it in the, um, in the chat uh, box? Uh, let's see, can I do it and get it out there? Um, oh, there you go. Thank you. Thank you, Sister um, Kim. I appreciate that. Um, getting that in Luke, the 10th chapter and the 38th verse. And so it reads, and Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem. Uh huh. And they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. Now, let us dis, 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 dis understand 
who we're talking about and what we're talking about. I want you all to understand this as you study, excuse me, the Word of God, as you look into the Word and as you go about your daily devotionals and different things in your study. Know that what happens in this Bible is not and the stories that we have is not by happenstance. It's not by circumstance. Everything has a reason for being in here. And it has certain principles of life and certain things that we need to glean from it. Okay? It's just not a happen. He said, and Jesus and his disciples continued to Jerusalem. You would think they were just on a walk or you just think they were just about going somewhere. God bless you, Sister Kelly. Um, but... There's always a purpose to whatever Jesus does, especially he had three uh, uh, years and change that he was making, you know, he was 33 and a half years old, you know, at the point in time um, he went to the cross. But he had to make, and within those three years of what he called his ministry, everything that he did was very purposeful. Everything that was recorded was recorded with the ultimate purpose in mind. Okay, and so let's dig this out with this very short little snippet of uh, scripture, but it's power packed. Did you hear what I say? I say it's power packed. Please like and share as you come on. Help us spread the gospel. Thank God for each and every one of you. If I see you, I'm going to acknowledge you. Sometimes you come on, I don't get a chance to see who's on, or who's looking, or who's whatever, but no. We thank God for you, Pastor and I and the members of Atisha. Thank God for you all coming on and being with us. And so um, Jesus said, uh, if you listen to this word, he says, um, and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem. They came to a certain village. Now I can tell you what this village was. This, this village, village they didn't say it in this particular scripture, but we've later come to find out this village was the Bethany because that's where um, these people ultimately stayed. There was a woman named Martha. Now you all have heard about Martha. Martha is very prominent in this because she is the sister of Lazarus. You all know of Lazarus. You've heard about Lazarus. But she's the sister of Lazarus. Now, I want you all to know and take a, 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 a particular point as to who's telling this story. This is the writer of the Gospel of Luke that um, this study is coming from. This is from the book of Luke. This is the writer of the book of Luke. And, and the, um, it's coming from a certain vantage point. And I want you to hear what he says and and the woman named Martha welcomed him now it's good to understand that in that culture in that culture back then it was hospitality was a big thing or you know to be hospitable to the traveler to be hospitable to those that are you know that was a big thing it was part of the culture to let that if you if you could provide a place for someone that you provided the place for them they would you know have buckets where because the most of the places they went they either walked or they rode a donkey or whatever they would have places so they could come get their feet washed and get the dust off of them to rest and to be fed and just like with uh uh, you know, the culture, that the, the culture here, most times it is the women that uh, bore the brunt of the uh, household things that had to be done. The women, if it was cooking and what have you, the women, it was they were tasked with that. That's what they did. That's what they were supposed to do. And so Mary, uh, but then they say her sister. And so the Bible is very descriptive here. In here, he's telling her that, that Martha had a sister, and that sister was named Mary. And Mary sat, and it made the point, sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. So it, 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 it's, it's, it's explaining here to us that Jesus came in, and Jesus, uh, with his disciples, took this advantage of this time to begin speaking. But it's very interesting here, the position of Mary. If you understand the culture, and if you understand how it is and how they would, uh, uh, you know, and it's somewhat similar to that 
even now. Um, the women did not just co-mingle with men dry long so back then. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. And matter of fact, even now in certain Orthodox Jewish cultures, they don't do it then either. Not mixed uh, uh, like that. You know, women have their place. Men have their place. And certainly during this particular time, and, and they were it's steeped in the culture back then, I'm sure it was like that. But it was very interesting that as Jesus taught, Mary was at his feet. Okay, and it made that point that Mary was at the Lord's feast listening. She was down uh, in the mix because if she because they made the point she was at his feet. They didn't say she was peeping in the door. They didn't say she was sitting outside the door or you know. But they were saying that the way it was made to sound and the way you can envision this, she was at his feet. I'm taking it very literally that she was at his feet. I, the, the imagination in my mind is I could see Jesus either sitting or, or laying or however he was doing and that she was close enough so that she could uh, uh, get all that what he was getting at his feet, right? And so listening to what was taught, but verse 40, verse 40 says, but Martha, 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 who's also a sister and who's only doing what she's supposed to be doing, right? Was distracted by the big dinner. Ooh, you see, cause he said Jesus and his disciples. We're assuming you say Jesus and the disciples continue. Now we know there were his disciples when they were traveling as a pack. We know that they're traveling with at least, um, um, probably about 12, um, 12 to 14 of them. Um, you know what I'm saying? Cause you got Jesus and the 12 and you know, and then you got a whole, you know, other folk around. So what's happening is that Martha, who is, um, of the female persuasion, who's, who's in that culture, they're tasked with the preparation of the household and the hospitality to prepare and Martha was distracted. And now and people sometimes will look at distracted as something of a bad thing. But Ma Martha was tasked. I wouldn't even say, you know, distracted means she was uh, 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 had her mind on doing what it is that she was supposed to do. What was Martha particularly doing wrong? You know, the culture is was what it was. The culture was that um, if they come, they're hungry, they need to eat. Everybody can't be in church doing something, you know, and then, you know, because afterwards, what's going to happen? Martha was doing a, what she was supposed to do. She was, but she was distracted with it. Yes, she was, meaning she was tasked with it. She was, uh, 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 she was about it. Yes, she was about it. She was about it. She was giving way to this. And so um, the big dinner, and in, in, in this New Living Translation, it breaks it down. She was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem? Now, but see, you know, now let's look at this, because see, I know what it means. Um to 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 be called upon to be doing something and my mind not in it and somebody call attention to it well won't you come help right won't you come help right y'all know i'm not a big cook about nothing you know what i'm saying so people don't tend typically tend to call me in the kitchen about doing much of nothing but um listen Listen, listen. <laughs> I want y'all to listen to me, Sister Joanne. <laughs> I want y'all to listen to this. Um, she told Jesus. She said, don't you think it's unfair that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Now, y'all just let that resonate. This is the Bible. Like I say, hey, Sister Faye, how you doing from Atlanta? Happy belated birthday to you, lady. Now, did, 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 you, did you see here what's going on? <laughs> I 
Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> Did you see what y'all see what's going on, right? What I'm doing is important because these people got to eat. They've been traveling. It's what we're supposed to do. The, the people will talk about it's real funny that people came to our house and then and we didn't show them any kind of hospitality that we didn't do what we were supposed to do. So it's not necessary that Martha was doing the wrong thing. Okay? She was a D. Let's look at Martha for a minute. Let's let's break Martha down. It's interesting that as we look at Martha, we can tell that Martha is a person that is 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 detailed oriented. Ma Martha would have to be um, have the attributes of 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 of, of what they call um, my friends um, who are what they call vertigos. You know, the, I mean, ver what is it? Ver what is it? Not vertigos. What you call them? Um, the one right after Leo. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Virgos, that's what they call them, Virgos. But the but the attributes. Uh, when they are people who are given to planning, very specific about stuff, and all these people, they, they like to have stuff in order. They like to have stuff, everything in its place. They are long, Virgos, that's right. They are long-term planners. They are very, uh, um, they are people who are, um, um, you know, they're perfectionists. Those, 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 those kind of people, they got to have it right. You know, if you look at those, the, the attributes of them, that's what it say about those kind of people. They are not haphazard at all. They are, you know, they want to, you know, they give, they can do these kind of things. You know how, you know how those, that, 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 that kind of person is. And she had that, this Martha, she was the one that she worried about the details. She wanted stuff done. I was, I was digging into her. She was, um, she wanted things to succeed. She wanted everything to be in place. She wanted to have the, the stuff cook right. She wanted the, everything to be there. She wanted there to be enough for everybody. Don't y'all know those kind of people? Every family got one. Every family got one that that they, you know, they're the one that got to get it together. They're the one. You know, they're going to head the family reunion committee because they the one they can get it. They can do all the stuff that needs to be done. They are the ones that they know how to bring it all together. Praise God. Come on, saints of God. Listen what it says. And then she says, um, and it's, it, 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 one of the things that Martha would do, um, she tried to do everything. Y'all know those kind of people, that Martha, you know, that Martha, she tried to do everything. She, and, and then what's really the part that's getting, she's getting upset because she's hyped about it. Got to be in order. Saying, Sister Joanne, you know you got to be fair. Got to be in order. Got to be put in place. It got to happen. Now, see, I'm of more of that Mary, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But I'm more of that Mary kind. You know what I'm saying? But that Martha, not a bad thing because stuff got to be done. Who going to clean the house? Somebody just say, I just, you know, you get some people, they just, they can't even sit down because they, they're going behind folk, picking up, picking up, picking up. You know, you walk in, they're picking up, picking them up, they're wiping up, they're cleaning, they're cleaning. They just got that kind of way. But the problem, your little mother too. And see, the thing about that kind of, but see, that's the kind of thing that it is a necessary need to have that kind of, you know, person who's given to that way of, of, of concern and care. That's a necessary way. God made her that way. She was that way. She took upon the household uh, the things that she had to do. She was, she was brought up right. The mama probably taught her right. She knows this is what needs to be done. But the problem was this. This is the problem. When, when, when uh, 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 she became frustrated... Because in the midst of her doing all that she was, she became frustrated because she looked over there at Mary. Let's, 
let's look and let's peep over here at what she's saying in verse 40. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair that you, that to you, to unfair that my sister just sits here while I work? One, she was so busy, she really sort of misinterpreted what Mary was doing. Hey, glory to God. She misinterpreted what Mary was doing. One, she did that. Because all she saw Mary, she looked at Mary and saw her just sitting. Okay? She saw her just sitting. She saw her in her mind. She saw what she wasn't supposed to be. Let's break it down. See, this This is a very short little uh, uh, couple of paragraphs here that we have to go through that we can break down and we can look at this. And Because when we look at we can't condemn Martha because Martha was doing what Martha was supposed to do. Because if somebody didn't cook, somebody was going to go home. All right? If somebody's going to clean up, the house going to be dirty. You know what I'm saying? I can just go to church, 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 you know, being, being a pastor's wife and, and being, you know, very much involved in ministry and different things. I can keep on going, going, going. But somebody got to wash the clothes. Somebody got to uh, uh, sweep up. Somebody got to wash them dishes. Somebody. Come on, saints. Somebody got to do it. Because as holy and as lovable and as sweet as Pastor is, at some point, he's going to say something. Right? So, you know, I can get in that spirit. I just want to pray, pray, and be with worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. But at some point, the house got to get clean. At some point, Somebody got to get fed at some point. So, so what month we can't judge her because I've heard this preached in many different forms and many different ways. And I've, I've heard it preached in a way where some people, you know, uh, uh, really come hard against Martha. But let's really deal with the fact that stuff had to get done. There was a somewhat of an expectation that stuff had to get done. Now, mind you, it is important, it is imperative, because I remember I told you, everything that Jesus did, and where they did, wherever he went, and however it was laid out, it was for a point and a purpose. This story is in here for a reason, right? For us to pick up the principles, learn what to do and what not to do. So as we look at this, and, and we understand, and we really dissect my sweet Martha, well, what, what, what was so wrong with Martha feeling how she particularly felt? Especially when you know it's a lot to do and you were the, uh, you were the only one doing it. You know, I think I felt some kind of way too. You know, we got to feed all these people. Who going to help me? Who gonna help me set the table? Who gonna help me pour the water? Who gonna help me? Who's gonna help me do this, that, and the other? We got all these men in here that need to eat. Okay? The problem with Martha is not that she had an attitude of knowing what was needed so far as in the culture and for hospitality. That, that, that's not the problem with Martha. The problem with Martha is Martha not understanding and not recognizing. <laughs> I know, isn't that wonderful to have a husband that can cook and cling to? <laughs> so, right? But this, did, did, you, did you hear this? It's her not recognizing totally what and who was in her presence at that moment and at that time. Because see, if she understood that Jesus, one, is the bread of life, right? I am the bread of life, right? I am the water. She's just, it's the recognition of not really knowing, her lack of recognition of knowing who it was 
that was in her presence at that moment in time. Because you see, as we read this story, Jesus, she wanted Jesus to chasten Mary and straighten Mary. Because she said, is it unfair that my sister just sits there? Because she saw her just sitting. And watch me do all the work. And then she beckoned Jesus to say, tell her to come help me. That's the end of verse 40, the B part. She said, tell her to come help me. Do it, Jesus. Tell her. You tell her. She's wrong. Tell her. Do what it is that the culture says we're supposed to do. Do what it is that they're looking for us to do. But don't you, let's look at this. Sometimes we want Jesus to do our bidding for us. We want Jesus to carry out our orders. Praise God. Come on, saints. As you come on, forever how long you're here, please like and share. Please like and share. Let's get the word out. We're talking about St. Luke 10th chapter um, beginning at 38th verse, talking about Mary and Martha. We're talking, we're breaking it down, and we're looking at what, it, what all that we can learn from this story of Mary and Martha. And the one thing that we're looking at, Martha, she gave Jesus a directive. Tell her, tell Mary, tell her to help me. Because all she's doing is sitting there. And she needs to be doing what the culture has mandated that we do. She needs to come from over there, over here. And she needs to get busy doing what it is that the culture says that she's supposed to do. Prepare the house for your company. She needs to leave there and come and do this. That's, that's, what, that's what is actually happening literally in that moment. That's what, um, and she wants Jesus to set Mary straight. And as we look at this, it says, but the Lord said to her, now listen, I love this, my dear Martha. I, I just like that, my dear Martha. That means, you know, he could have handled her any number of ways. She could say, hush, and you do what you do and let her do what she do. But that's not what he did. He handled her because he wanted her to learn something. Amen? He wanted her to get something out of this interaction, right? He didn't want to leave her like that, right? So he, she says to her, but the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. You, 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 you stressing over all these details. You, you got it. You, 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 you. See, that's the part. Not that you not, can't do some of this stuff, but you done got it where these things are controlling you. They're controlling your attitude. They're controlling how you look at things. They've upset your spirit. That's the problem, Martha. Not that stuff don't have to get done, but you don't let this stuff done get got into you that it's become bigger than what it's supposed to be. You're letting it become the driving force to think. And you can look at life and you can tell when things get twisted, when things get out of place, when the priorities get messed up. And you get to stressing about stuff you don't really need to, don't need to be, really be stressed about. Because when you get stressed about things that don't need to be stressed about, you can miss the mark. 
Because he, and Jesus understood it. He understood. And I know that's the reason why. Well, good evening, my dear, evening, beloved evening. Pastor evening. Edwards. God right. bless you. All right. Jesus didn't have to, you know, uh, 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 he, 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 no, he wanted her to, to, to get the picture. He handled her in the way, because he didn't, he said, I don't want to leave you like this. I, I want you to get what's going on. I want you to understand that it's a bigger picture. Pastor, before I go on my next point, I just want you want to get a people greetings and, and I'm, I'll carry on if you want oh, to. Oh, well, praise God for everyone. I thank God for everyone that's, that's on the line because God is a good God. God is a loving and kind God. We appreciate God. Appreciate yes. my, my lovely, lovely wife for, praise God for, for, you, for, for doing what, what she do because she's, she's consistent and she's dedicated. And we thank God for her. We thank God for, for you that's, you, you consistent uh, to, uh, listeners, you, you, you consistent ones that tune in and you can, you ones that, 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 that do what you need to do to help us in every way. We thank God for you, you, and especially, especially you. you. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Pastor. As you know, and I know you've been following along, we're talking about Mary and Martha mm -hmm. and the lessons that we pick up from this, these few verses where Jesus' interaction with Amen. them. Amen. And so right now, Jesus is gotten where Mary uh, is at Jesus' feet, but Martha is looking at things from a very uh, she's looking at it from a very fleshly point. She's looking at it from a point of frustration. She's looking at it from a point of uh, 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 where she's into her world and into uh, uh, what is what she thinks has got to be done right then, right there, right there, and not recognizing fully who the the the, the power that was in and and that was in her presence. Mm -hmm. And what that meant. Okay? Amen. Because, see, as we can understand, she was stressing to make this big meal. If we look back, she says, in, 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 the, in this New Living Translation, she says she was distracted by making a big dinner. Jesus has never been concerned about um, how folk are going to be, uh, 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 going to be, uh, whether or not they're going to be fed or not. Because you know why? Why? Why do you think he's never been concerned about how folk, if they're going to be fed or not? Because this earthly, this earthly food is temporary. It's, it's, it's good for us at the moment. But that spiritual food is everlasting. That spiritual food is, is, is one that, that we can deal with. But you notice, you ever notice something here? That even though Mary was in the midst of the men, Jesus didn't rebuke her. Jesus didn't tell her, no, nope, you, you need to go do what you got to do. Is that he made a point here, and we need to get this point, is that first things first. Ooh. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Ooh. And all these things will be added to you. That's Seek God first. The, 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 he is the bread of life. See, that part. Understanding, there were only about, you know, him and his disciples. There were only about 14 or 15, however many in the household. Do you know that Jesus was the one? How many had he fed with two fish and what? That's right. How many had he already fed with two fish and five loaves of bread? He fed well over, how, you know what I'm saying, 5,000 men at one time. And then another point, he fed 4,000 men at one time, right? And so then, and then added to that women and children. Surely it wasn't, wouldn't be a big deal about the little disciples. She could have brought just a biscuit out and that would have just done it for everybody. But that her thought process was not there. She wasn't thinking. And that's the problem where people mess it up and how it gets missed. Does, am I making sense? Well, yes, because... The, 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 uh, I would pick at my wife sometimes. I call her Martha when she get all see, combobulated see, and stuff. Now, see, and, 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 and that's, and, 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 and that's just a playful thing. See, and, 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 so, and I love and, and so, and so, he, he wish I was a Martha. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Joanne, he wish I was a Martha getting that so, hook. <laughs> and so the, 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 uh, a thing is, is that, is that she was, she had a right to be concerned. She had a right. Yes, she but, did. 
she was putting her 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 duties above the value of who she had in her presence. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes. And see, this is the part. This is the part. And this is this is this is this is the part that I think is big and the thing that we can pull out of the out of this these these these, these verses. You know, it's only a few verses, but it's power packed. Because the understanding say not that uh, uh, Martha was wrong in the fact that she knew that stuff had to be done. But the fact of the matter is, Jesus was there in the capacity that he was at the place he was teaching. Okay? He was at the point, and he put it, he said, You are worried and upset over these details. Mm -hmm. That means there are details and there are things that they're out there. But this is not the time to be worried and upset That's about right. it. That's right. And you better listen at this next verse. I'm listening at this next verse. This is so powerful. And in the New Living Trans Translation, and I'm a pastor, get King James, but if you listen, it, say, it says, there is only one thing worth being concerned about. In that moment, she had to recognize this. I'm in chapter 10. Okay. And the very, he says, he said, there is only one thing. This is verse 42. It says, there is only one thing worth being concerned about. Listen what he said. And Mary has discovered it. All right. <laughs> because see, when pastor said it, he said it loud and he said it clear. He said, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added. Amen. See, you, you, but see the, 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 the lesson that I look at and the things that I pull out of this, not that Martha didn't have it right for the culture, not that Martha didn't, wasn't tasked with on a regular day and a regular time about doing those kind of things. But when Jesus is in your presence, All right. understanding he is the bread of life, he is a well of water that springeth forth. Yes. He is a well that never runs dry. That's right. He all encompassing. You know what I'm saying? Not recognizing, but Mary with her spiritual eye realized that, wait a minute, there is nothing more important. Nothing. Than me getting at his feet. My, my, my. Go ahead, Pastor. Was, I, I'm off. Oh, Jesus. Well, the, the, the King James Version says, uh, when, when, when Jesus answered, uh, answered her, he said, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Y'all, y'all, that's King James Version. Mm -hmm. And she I, chose it. She, she said, and it says, but but dear Martha, you are worried. <clears throat> Listen, I like this New Living Translation because it breaks it down in, in this language and lets us know. He said, now how many can understand and make it relative to, to, to life, life today, life issues today? How many can take this thing and, and let it translate into life issues? How many times have you been stirred up, distracted, and, and sidelined because and really can't center yourself because of all that is going on around you. That's right. Are, are you so busy? Are you so busy? You can't pray. You so busy. Are you so busy? You can't uh, have that devotional time with are the you Lord. So are busy? you that busy? Are you that, that busy? That, 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 that the, 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 oh, yeah. the creator that made heaven, heaven and, and earth, earth, the creator that made you and, and, and everyone, that he is in control. You need to take time and, and worship and magnify the and Lord. And magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Take, take the time. time. Yeah, you know, time. It, Pastor said, are we so busy? Yeah. But see, that's what happens with the with the worries of life. With the, when, when you look at it, it just the, the matters of life, the things of life, it can encompass us so much. That we lose our way and forget who's in our presence, 
who we have ultimate relationship with, right? right? You know, who we understand that this is the one that centers us. This is the one that charts our way. That's right. He leads and guides us, right? We, we, but sometimes we can get so pressed. Pastor, you know, our whole thing for our teaching Christian Center this year is stay focused on, on what God has for us. Stay focused on the Lord's word. Stay focused on, don't get distracted, but stay focused. That's right. And, 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 and if you pick up anything, I, 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 I implore each and every one of you to get in this word. Um, I, I, I really do. I want you all to open it up. This just these little scriptures here. And this just here. And just pick it apart. See the different, many different ways that you can look at this. Understanding that, you know, it, it, people do, you do get busy. That's right. Life is full of business Amen. and, you know, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. It can. But if we get so caught up in this, then we'll miss the crucial part. That's right. We'll miss the critical part. We'll miss the centering of Jesus, of just being able to get there, get centered, get present with him. You know, there, there I was listening to someone teach about being present with God. Allowing his presence to fill you, being present and accounted for. Right? Amen. That what does mean being present? You know, I remember um uh 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 um being, you know, doing stuff, being into my cell phone, being into social media, being into the and just into that. And when I'm so into that, I'm missing all that's going on, you know, that maybe I'm not present. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I have to put the phone aside. Sometimes I have to turn the TV off. Sometimes I have to just sit and hear, meditate on the word of God. Hear ye the word of the Lord, saints. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear, it. hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Son, you know, you say that you should meditate. Meditation is very important. That's the centering of your mind, right? Around the word of God. That's, and it doesn't have to take a long time. It's just, you can't, you know what? Right now, all of that is not important. Right now, it's about me just getting myself aligned. Just sitting here. Just praying. Remember, I told you we we you know we are putting ourselves back and reminding you of the pandemic posture, mm -hmm. where we pray, where we praise, and where we at peace. Yes. Okay. Remember that. Pray, praise, and be at peace. Yes. Peace. That the peace of God. We can get all huffed and buffed. And you know, you, we can do that, but we got to remember who's in our, who's are we? That's right. Who, who, the relationship we have with him, the renewing his word and how we are, we are a people, a royal priesthood. Amen. We are people called by God. We're just, we're not, we're not ordinary folk. And, 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 and like that, we're kingdom-minded folk. The way we look at things is a whole lot different than the way the world looks at things. That's right. Yes? Am I right about it? Am I teaching all right tonight? Is, 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 does that make sense to anyone? We're, we don't see things as the world sees things. We see things strictly from the lens of what how we've been taught in God. Because there's a lot going on in this here world. Not that it's not important on some level. But it doesn't. It doesn't. Extend above. Who the Lord is. Amen. It doesn't. You know. There's nothing higher than he is. There's nothing wider than he is. He can't go so low to get under him. He can't go so high to get over him. He can't go so wide to get around him. He's all. In all. Yes. That's the God we serve. 
Am I right about it, saints? Amen. Am I, am I, am I teaching you okay? I, I implore everyone. Just It's just a few verses. Dig into that and see what it is that Jesus is saying. The important part. She made up her mind to get all that he was teaching. Mm -hmm. To get what was being taught. Yes. Because he said, the words that I speak are life. Hallelujah. 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 Does this mean anything to anybody? I implore you today, get the important part. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't be so busy that you miss it. Amen. Don't Amen. be so busy that it goes over your head. Get it. It's going to benefit you. Hallelujah. We'll be all right. Remember that pandemic posture we also talked about. We get in our place of prayer, our place of praise. And I pray some peace. Be in safety, y'all. Praise amen, God, Pastor. We thank God for our teacher today. Hallelujah. As we give her a hand, we appreciate Hallelujah. her. Thank God for her. God She's just such you. a sweet and beautiful person. And we thank you God for her. Uh, uh, um, because <clears throat> as we stay focused on what God is doing, we need to put, we need to be reminded. And how we be reminded is stay in His Word. Stay in his word for uh, 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 just a little while each day. Just, just, just work your way up to 10% to of each day. You, glory to God. If you get 24 hours, what's 10% of that? Hallelujah. Just, just work your way up. Just, just work your way. Start off with 5, 10 minutes, but work your way up to, to each day having a, a certain thing that you listen or you pray or you do whatever you do. But seek God first. The important part. Seek God first. You know, as we seek God first and seek his way of doing things, all this other stuff will be added. Yeah, all this other stuff will come and fall in place. Because <laughs> he give us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding on how to deal with life. Hallelujah. Thank God for, for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to deal with life. And life more abundantly. Thank God for that abundant life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to pray. Thank you, Lord, for we know that you hear us. We know, Lord, that you live in us. We know, Lord, that your power is in us. But well, we thank you, God, that we as followers of Christ, we as believers, we believe that your power lives in us. That greater one lives in us. That Holy Spirit lives in us. Oh, God, we thank you. Thank you. For how you lead and guide our very lives. How you mold and use us, God, in the name of Jesus. For, Lord, we know that you are God and there's no other. Thank you. Thank you, God. For how you speak through our cause and think through our mind. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. For how you help us, Lord, to deal with life and life issues. Oh, God, we thank you. Thank you, God. For breaking down the barriers that before us, God. Thank you, Lord. For leading and guiding our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your angels going before us. Yeah. Your angels, your angels being with us. Yes. Your angels behind us. Give We're surrounded angels, by your Ooh, hedge of force. protection. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord, for how you protect us in every way, God. Oh, Lord, we love you. Yes. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you. How excellent is your name in all the earth. We give you the glory, honor, and praise. And thank you, God, for those that have given and already gave uh, in our offering today for our Bible study. Thank you, Lord, for how you bless them. How you bless them, to, that those that have given by cash app, those that have have, have, have sent it by mail, or just drop it off. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for those that, that yeah. just how, how you touch them in every way, God. And, Lord, as you bless them, bless them to have wisdom and knowledge and understanding on how to deal with the wealth of this world. In Jesus' name we do pray. You are a shepherd, we shall not want. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. Hallelujah. We want to thank and praise God for each and every one of you that joined us on this hour, Tuesday night, live Facebook Bible study. Oh, it was a great few. I tell you, it was real good uh, understanding uh, um, what lessons we can be learned from Mary and Martha as it relates to um, putting Jesus in the place that he's supposed to be and we putting ourselves in the place where we're supposed to be. We ask that you join us again on Sunday. Our regular service times at 1045. Our pastor will be bringing the word of God that Hallelujah. day. It's also youth day. 
and we respect the wonderful youth program. Thank God for you, Sister Erica, with that. And we just appreciate each and every one of you. Know that we love you and know that we appreciate you. Appreciate you for your prayers. We do appreciate you for your financial support. God bless you to be a blessing to us. And we thank you. God bless my sister Kathy Ezel. I see her out there. And any other my sisters that, that I see. Oh, God bless you, Elder Barbara Reddick. God bless you, the singing woman of God. We just thank each and every one. And if I miss anyone, I want to let you know that I, I, I is not my intent. I only can see you when you come through. But I know God bless you that you stop by. Please do like and share. Go back and re-hear it again. We thank God for each and every one of you. Again, we love you. Hallelujah. And we say yes to God's will and God's way. Thank God for traveling mercy, traveling grace. Thank God for his protection about each and every one of you. Till we meet again at the appointed time. God bless you. Amen. Bless Amen. Let's raise your hand and say, Lord, Lord, we thank you for the victory. For the victory. To our Lord and Savior. To our Lord and Jesus Savior. Christ. Jesus Christ. Victory over sin. Victory over, victory over sin. sickness. Victory over, victory over sickness. anything. Anything. That's just not, not like, like you. you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For forgiving me. For forgiving for me. For saving me. Saving me. For filling me. Filling me. With your Holy with Spirit. With your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And, amen. and amen. God Love loves you. God loves you. And, you. You. and especially and you. And especially you. Have an awesome and wonderful awesome week. Awesome and wonderful week. Hallelujah. God loves you. Be safe out there. Yes, Be sure yes, to mask yes, up. Yes, yes. Take care of yourself, okay? Hallelujah. Do the things that you need to do. Thank God. Hallelujah. 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 Love you. Take care.